Hey, what's up? Nefarious Wes here. And on today's episode of I Haven't Played This Game in Years, I'm going to revisit a Super Nintendo game that I haven't touched in over two decades. Super Adventure Island. Now, I actually have the Super Famicom version, because uh, back in 96 or 97 when I purchased the game, uh, it wasn't every day that you would see a Super Famicom game complete in box uh, at your local game store. So when I saw this and it was under 20 bucks, I jumped all over it. Thing is, I really haven't played this game since then. Um, I really don't remember too much about this game other than it had a killer Yuzo Koshiro soundtrack. Uh, other than that, when it comes to like gameplay and stuff, I really have no recollection of this game whatsoever. So it must have not been that great. It must have not been that good if it didn't put a very lasting impression on me. Um, I mean, I had no desire to play it in the past 20 plus years, so what does that tell you? And it probably would have been another 20 years before I would have played this game had it not been for an online challenge uh, that I was participating in. And when this game came up, I was like, hey, what do you know? <laughs> I have a reason to pop this in again. So now that I've revisited Super Adventure Island, what do I think of it today? Let's take a look. I've been a fan of Adventure Island from the very beginning. Actually, even before that, as I had first played Wonder Boy in the Sega Master System on a display unit at my local Target when I was 9. I wanted it. Only problem was that it wasn't available for the console I had been currently playing, the Nintendo Entertainment System. Luckily, a year later, I got Adventure Island for Christmas and by sheer coincidence, it was pretty much the same Wonder Boy game that I had coveted a year prior. I've been a fan ever since. Which is why it may come as a surprise that I hadn't played Adventure Island's first foray into the 16-bit realm in over two decades. Damn, that's a long time. Master Higgins' old lady Tina needs to be rescued once again, so it's time to strap on your grass skirt and dive into the perils that make up Adventure Island. In typical Hudson platforming fashion, the isle is infested with a myriad of bloodthirsty baddies and traps to ensure that Tina remains confined within her granite prison. Adhering to the Adventure Island tropes that we're all accustomed with, each stage has a time limit that dwindles down slowly and can be replenished by gathering the many pieces of exotic fruit, which is scattered across the island. Higgins can wield his patented stone hammer in this one, but also has the option of using a boomerang instead. This is my preferred weapon of choice, as the archaic mallet is thrown in arcs, and oftentimes goes over the very enemies that you're trying to bludgeon. These weapons can be upgraded with each object of destruction collected in succession, up to three times. This especially comes in handy when facing off against bosses who take multiple hits of damage. The skateboard also makes an appearance here, and while I have pretty much avoided the skateboard in each of the preceding Adventure Island titles, I made sure to snag it every chance I could in this one, mainly to give me more speed. See, that's one thing about Super Adventure Island. While the sprites are large and detailed, the characters and all-around movements are extremely slow in comparison to every game within the franchise up to that point. While you are afforded with the super jump, there's no run button here. The closest you're going to get is that aforementioned skateboard. My guess is that this was done by design to combat the horrendous slowdown problems that early SNES games were often plagued with. If you go into Super Adventure Island playing as if it were one of the earlier NES titles, you're not going to get very far. This game takes far more patience than any other in the series and is one of its biggest departures from the franchise. The overall affair is pretty short, five stages in all, and is a typical for an Adventure Island game. The good thing is that most of Super Adventure Island's environments are unique from each other save for a few similar looking island stages, caves, and swimming levels. Settings not yet explored also include forests, deserts, snowfields, and a number of vertically scrolling ones. Each level is made up of three substages and concludes with a boss battle. Now don't set your tiki torch down just yet. Adventure Island is known for having loads of hidden goodies throughout, and this one's no different. Invisible fruit is everywhere and can be uncovered simply by firing your weapon into open space where fruit happens to be veiled. And each level, or world, has a hidden bonus stage in it, festooned with prizes galore. Locating these hidden goodies will without question help you along your adventure by rewarding you with a 1-up for every 50,000 points scored. Up to an additional 7 can be earned in this fashion, on top of the ones located in bonus stages. The game is extremely generous with extra lives, basically making its limit of 2 continues a non-issue. Which brings me around to probably my biggest gripe of the game. It's far too easy. 
The Adventure Island games are known for being challenging, frustrating, and let's be frank here, absolutely brutal at times. That's not the case with Super Adventure Island. With the game's short length, forgiving checkpoints, pushover bosses, and damn near endless opportunities to earn extra men, Master Higgins' inaugural quest on the SNES is a friggin' cakewalk. At least it didn't piss me off much. That's something. But we can't talk about Super Adventure Island without discussing its killer soundtrack. Yuzo Koshiro, known for his work on games such as ActRaiser, was recruited to give Super Adventure Island an extra element. The then 24-year-old composer was already highly coveted within the gaming industry in the early 90s for his brilliant music, and Hudson Soft landed him to send Adventure Island to new heights. The result is a fantastic soundtrack that is often mismatched from the game itself. I don't necessarily feel as if I hit the club while duking it out with a giant octopus. And I can honestly do without the traffic whistle in this one. But the tracks are archetypal Koshiro, with this song sounding as if it came straight from the Revenge of Shinobi soundtrack. Or how about this one? I'd swear that it's from Streets of Rage. The visuals complement the music well, as everything is extremely colorful and vibrant. Toss in a dash of some redundant Mode 7, and it's an early 90s kid's recipe for a stiffy. Hot damn! And I have to touch on the cover artwork really quick here. The Japanese version has a collection of the characters within the game on the cover from original Adventure Island artist Susumu Matsushita, who would then later design the characters for the Maximo games. The American version? Meh. While not bad, it pales in comparison to the unique and creative artwork that was offered overseas. At least Higgins looks like Higgins, right? That he does. So what do I think of Super Adventure Island today versus 20 years ago? Well, I actually like it a lot more than I did back then. Um, it's actually pretty fun. Now is it the best Adventure Island game in the series? Uh, no way, not even close. It, it's still on the bottom of the totem pole for me. But that does not mean that it's a bad game and does not mean that it's not fun. Um, I actually really enjoyed it this time around and uh, it's a game that Hey, I'm, I may pop this in every few years now um, and just play casually like I do with any other Adventure Island game. So if you're curious about this one, I say check it out as it's not too expensive and I'd say that it's worth it just for the soundtrack alone. So give it a shot. All right, well that does it for this episode of I Haven't Played This Game In Years. Uh, there's a few other games that I plan on dusting off here in the next couple of months or so. So just stay tuned and uh, we'll do some more episodes here. Until next time, catch you guys later.